Hey everyone, I'm Ko, one of the two artists of Bento Box. Now, some of my friends, especially uh, aspiring artists who are just getting started, tend to have a problem with anatomy. It's a very big frustration we all run into when we first start. But, I figure I might as well just throw up a little video, since I'm the most negligent of the two. Me being that Cheyenne usually puts up a lot more than I do, I thought I might as well contribute in a different way. This time, I'm going to go ahead and give my two cents on how to get a good grasp on an ah, on an enemy, a seen enemy, a seen enemy, <laughs> no, anatomy. So, here goes nothing. First. We're going to work from the head and work our way down. One thing we can start off with is the obvious oval shape. Yes, yes, you must always make an oval for a head. But don't start off by drawing an oval. You're not really going to draw a very good oval at first. No one is, not even me. What we have to do is something that I'm often ridiculed by Cheyenne for. I often do this little thing. I'll be circling and circling and circling for quite a long time, and she'll make fun of me because it looks like I'm missing the paper, I'm not drawing anything. In actuality, what I just find helps for me is that if I draw over and over again in my head, I'll finally get the idea, that I, the shape that I'm very comfortable with. Alright, then it also helps get my fingers and my hand more warmed up for, you know, all the different curves and movements that I'm going to go for. You don't really have to do that. One thing you can do, though, is practice. But not just practice drawing, practice sketching. Don't just draw a circle, draw a bunch of light circles. You might draw one too wide, too thin, but eventually you'll find one that you're very comfortable with, and all those thin lines will line up over to the point where you find a very good shape. It doesn't look so much like an oval because the camera is angled, but I'll move it up a little. Alright, there we go. Now this oval is one of many tries put together. I finally found something that fits, something that I'm comfortable with. Alright, there are many, many lines that are smaller, thinner, wider, taller, bigger, larger, smaller, but if I keep on trying, I'll find most of the lines are congregated on the place that I feel more comfortable with, and that's how sketching helps. You just keep on working at it until it builds up to something you like. Then we go on to the neck. By the way, I'm going to do something more uh, profile-like, so that way we can get something more of a natural stance, since people tend to have problems with that. When you draw anatomy and focus on anatomy, you tend to make something that looks rigid and machine-like. You want to make it natural, and the best way to do that is a little angled not profile, not head-on view. Now, you can make the neck a little curved. Not, the back one is, the, the back side is obviously more rigid and longer than the front. You're going to obviously do the line work that I taught you, told you about. Now, regardless of being male or female, the basic structure of the skeletal, uh, of the human skeleton is generally the same. So, um, you're going to add to that as you get more detail, but for now we're going to get, you know, a little a little curve down, a little triangle pointing down, an arrow shape. But when you get to the lower torso, you're going to curve it out for where the hips meet. And here the chest kind of like rolls out just a little bit and stays straight all the way down for the midsection. Now before we get to the hips, we're going to focus on the arms. Get a good ball socket going there because you're shoulder rotates 360 degrees almost in every direction so you want to get a good round feeling there now for the oval the, the you want to get a good oval but you're not going to draw it the right uh, right the first time so you're going to want to get these light lines going you know you might make it too long like here or too short like here but eventually it'll all start to get to the point where you say ah here it is there's that shoulder I really like so you darken it up a little and that that place that you're comfortable with, trace it out, and ta-da, there's the front, there's the top arm. Now the bottom arm, the forearm, is a little different. It's not so uniform. Instead, it's more of a bulge over here, where the, where the uh, forearm gets most of its muscle, and then it narrows down a whole lot to the wrist. 
Now the hand, people will often say, draw a box. Well, yes, drawing a box does help because your hand is very box-like, but because of the way your hand rests, it's not going to be square. It's going to be more of a trapezoid. See this angle here for that for those knuckles? Your knuckles aren't necessarily angled that way, but when your hand rests, it kind of like falls at that steep angle. It depends really on how your hand is flexed or where it is, but generally it's like that. Another thing I also like to point out is when I'm drawing the hip hand area, I try to remember, uh, you know those dress codes you used to remember from high school where you know, they would say girls can't wear skirts that are shorter than where your fingertips fall on your leg. Try to imagine that, you know? That's where you find, kind of feel where, how long, if your arm is too long or if your legs or torso is too long. But generally, if you follow the idea of doing that over and over again, you'll figure it out and you'll get a pretty decent, you know, spot on hit on a good proportion. Right now, however, we're going to draw the back of the, the, the back arm. Now even though it's covered, you still want to get used to drawing that circle so you at least get a good curve going and get that oval for that long arm. Alright, it's not going to come off at first like it did for me, but try to sketch over and over again until you feel comfortable with it. Now, don't be afraid to go behind the body too, but you know, in the future we're going to try and avoid that. But do this so you can feel comfortable that to know that you do have a very good shaped arm. Same idea get that rounded shape but curve it down and that angle for that hand now as we're not being very detailed no need to go into too much detail for the crotch region but for the hip area for the pelvis people expect the leg to be to, to start where the buttocks is like right over here but that's not true your leg, your entire leg bends at the pelvis point over here, so you want to make it really high up into the pelvis, into the torso region, and get a big, long oval going, because your thigh is generally quite roundish, so no need to go into more detail than an oval. And the same thing for the other leg, so it's generally the same. Now let's back up a little so we can the rest of the legs. Here, it's the same thing as the forearm. Instead, though, you're going to, you know, go from the wide down to the narrow ankle. But on the other leg, your shin bone kind of at the kneecap, right over here, it tends to get a little curve going. Not, not so exaggerated, but you'll find that curve that feels comfortable. It's kind of like, it makes you feel like your legs have a spring to it, you know? And, uh... It's not a straight line, but it's a bit of a curve. Sometimes it can be exaggerated depending on, you know, the stance or the angle. But get that nice curve going on the calf and narrow it down with a nice curve at the end for the ankles. Now, we're going to get to the, oh, so fearful feet. Oh my goodness, what are we going to do here? Well, a lot of times it's in the sh it's a little longer. Our foot is, uh, is like an elongated hand, basically, you know, with shorter fingers. But because we're never really floating, we don't get to see that. Instead, we see it edge on or at a profile view flat up against the floor. So draw like there's a surface down. Draw that same trapezoid look that we had for the hand, only instead make it really flat here and rounder at the, at the top. All right, that'll give it an idea. I made the toes a little too big, you know, or at least the... So instead, I'll just flatten it out over there. There we go. You know? But if you're drawing a profile view, there's a lot more structure involved. There's a ball for where the heel is, and that kind of curves in for the instep, depending on how the arch is. That kind of swoops down on the instep over here. Got another little ball here for the ball of the foot, and then the toes. And looks like he has roller skates. <laughs> but generally, this is how the human body looks for the most part. Yay!